your trouble, like most average golfers, is that you don't use your body properly. You don't get enough power out of the muscles in your back. You try to turn your hips and body, but it is plain that you don't quite understand how to convert the body turn into club head speed. Obviously, Bill, the immediate cause of your trouble is the way in which you swing the club through, that is, in the way you hit the ball. But it's useless to try to correct that until we're certain that what goes before is all right. The average golfer argues that the backswing makes little difference because he does not hit the ball with his backswing. But the answer is easy, that he can't swing through correctly unless his swing back brings him into a correct posture. Consistency in golf depends directly upon form. An unsound swing may work well enough on occasion, but soundness of method is the only key to reliable performance. A proper position at the top of the swing is worth some study in order to make clear what the backswing should accomplish. To show the full extent of the backward windup, two positions would have to be used because there's no point at which all parts of the swing stop going up and begin to come down. The hips actually move forward while the club is still going back. For this reason, it is likely to be misleading to draw too definitely a line of separation between backswing and downswing. The two should be merged as nearly as possible into one. Nevertheless, it is possible to stop a continuous motion long enough to examine a position through which it passes. The important points here are the wind-up of the hips and body, the extension of the left arm, and the cock of the wrist, indicated by the angle between the left arm and the shaft of the club. Now let's see how the backswing arrives at these positions. Addressing the ball as I do, about opposite the toe or instep, of the left foot. There's no perceptible lateral movement of the hips during the backswing. I'm already well behind the ball where I can move into the shot as I swing through. The turn of the body takes place approximately around the spine as an axis and the head does not move appreciably either sidewise or in an up and down direction. Completing the turn of the hips, the weight moves forward to the inside of the toe of the left foot and backward to the outside of the heel of the right foot. The turn should be continued until a real stretch is felt in the right leg. The extension of the left arm limits the width of the arc which the backswing can follow. If the left arm is not taut, its extension is indefinite and the swing may go anywhere. But if it is fully extended, the arc of the swing will be as wide and therefore as long as possible, allowing the greatest time to gain speed before impact. The left arm must be straight at impact. It is possible to straighten it during the downswing, but the more certain and therefore more consistent method is to keep it reasonably straight from the start. The best way to assure a full extension of the left arm is to use it in pushing the club back, not independently of the body turn, but assisted by the movement of the entire left side. The movement of the right arm during the first part of the backswing indicates quite clearly that it is taking little part in the action. But then after swinging round, it begins to help in lifting the club over the shoulder. The elbow is drawn away from the side of the body but it remains below the club and never appears likely to begin flapping like the wing of a frightened bird. Mm -hmm. 